So hey guys, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on my progress on the N64 uh, debug interface that I've been working on. So I've been tapping into port uh, 4 here, the Joy Bus uh, port number 4. And I've been, as you guys saw in my uh, previous uh, updates there on the Discord channel, um, I've sort of written this little uh, program, um, more or less it's uh, some microcode that I've implemented when I've got a state machine running uh, to basically implement a custom polling signal with some custom bytes uh, to be sent over the Joybus port number four. And then that's getting routed through to the, um, I've got it monitored on my scope. Uh, so I can customize the polling signal and also customize um, the um, any bytes that I send out. However, the, the, the polling signal has to be, a, even though I can customize it, it's essentially a, um, a special command that's being sent to the PIF chip within the N64 to dictate which mode of transmission to be, uh, to be placed in, whether it's receiving uh, signals from the joysticks or if you're actually sending out signals to talk to uh, the memory packs that go into the back of the uh, joystick controllers and that's actually the mode that I've been that I've been using uh, in order to send out uh, the uh, large packets the 36 byte packets um, of, uh, of data so that's the mode that I've been using um, now, still working on getting the, uh, the UART capturing and whatnot, but I, uh, for uh, tr uh, sort of capturing the data that's coming out of this, I've written all the VHDL code that I need for it, but uh, I was also looking into the possibility of doing RS-232 communication to receive the uh, signals coming from here. So essentially coming out of the N64, going into an FPGA and then getting translated uh, to either get displayed onto an LCD display uh, doing ASCII data, which is one that I've um, I've been sort of still tweaking, or getting it sent to say like the serial RS-232 uh, uh, serial connections that you get on the back of uh, your computer. So the DB9 or DE9, I guess is the technical term uh, for those types of connectors. You got a, um, a nine pin, a serial connection and that goes back to the 70s and 80s uh, for that protocol and it's been it's really rugged and robust and so I thought it'd be cool to do that and so that's something that I got sort of working and I wanted to show you guys that give you a little update on, on what's happening so I've managed to implement uh, an RS-232 UART uh, within my VHDL code on the FPGA now what I want to show you that, so essentially what I'll be doing is sending out uh, the, the serial communication from the um, N64 and then it'll get received by the FPGA and get translated into ASCII codes, right? Uh, now I'm still working on that, but at the same time, as I said, I was working on the RS-232 so that we could send out from the N64 directly into the computer uh, through an RS-232 serial port and then just receive the hex uh, the hex data or uh, messages so instead of being displayed on this LCD you would have it on a hyper terminal session like what I have here on this uh, little this is a an industrial uh, uh, sort of um, industrial handheld computer or like a tablet so if I type if I use the keyboard here and I just hit some letters you can see that it gets forwarded through on the... Now it's sending those signals out in ASCII over the RS-232 onto the FPGA. And so now if you watch the signals here, so those are the true ASCII codes representations for the keys that I'm pressing on the keyboard. So I got one, which is the true, the, the hexadecimal ASCII for that is 31. And I've got number two, three, four, five, six. So as you can see, that's it's that I've got it, I've got it working, right? So that's pretty awesome. Now, let's say I wanted to send information back, doing a transmission of RS-232. Well, if you watch this, I've got 
within the FPGA, I've got the, when I hit the switch, the FPGA is going to send out uh, the letter G uh, over and over again as a transmission. So it's going to be sent out RS-232 into the computer RS-232 and you should see it here on the receiving end. So if I flick the switch, there you go, you can see it's pumping in over and over again the letter G, which I have implemented on this switch. And you can see the transmission signal coming in there on the RS-232 port when I flick that switch. Anyway, so essentially it means that I've got this working as a, 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 an RS-232 UART. So getting the messages sent to and from a, a PC running a hyperterminal session like PuTTY or just even hyperterminal on the old Windows 98 machines, uh, we're going to be able to send signals back and forth from my FPGA. So that's pretty awesome. So the next step is to actually uh, run the sampling uh, process that I have set up and I've written all the code for it so I, I've managed to send out custom signals um, and I've, right now I've got uh, eight bytes that I'm sending out uh, serially on that port and I've customized them to what I, what I want and uh, I'm starting to get the mapping done correctly for the LCD display so I've got uh, the header going there and then as you can see the data coming in uh, is flying in and getting mapped um, to those uh, characters on the display. So right now I'm just working with the stop bit uh, to get that implemented correctly and trying out uh, a couple of different uh, changes within my, my Altera uh, FPGA code, the VHDL code that I've been implementing uh, within HDL Designer. And so I've got that all sort of mapped out in a, a project which also implements uh, different uh, uh, control uh, sets of code, different processes uh, for setting up the, the uh, essentially all the code that controls the, v the VHDL uh, code that controls the display as well. So there's code written specifically for that uh, to implement um, uh, getting characters to be mapped and sending the proper signals for displaying ASCII code data or just regular kind of uh, hex data depending on how you want to display it. Uh, so there's separate code for that um, and then mapping the signals coming in on an, one of the uh, one of the I.O. ports which I've had to write that code specifically for matching the protocol for the joy bus uh, coming off the 64 and right now I have it set to port to, uh, uh, set it to port 4 uh, and only monitoring that allowing us to use the other three ports um, and so I was having some issues there and managed to use the logic analyzer here my Tektronix uh, TLA 715 and uh, map the uh, the signal uh, coming in there the serial uh, signal so this is the joy bus protocol um, and I because I actually wanted to see it map the way uh, the, the logic analyzer was doing it not necessarily through uh, the oscilloscope this would be the true way that the FPGA would be seeing it, um, converting that to a, a pure digital um, uh, signal. It's exactly down to uh, a delta between the falling edge and the rising edge of the 30, uh, third bit, technically, uh, which is mapped at uh, it's 132 um, uh, microseconds, 132.25. And then that last rising edge is actually your I guess you'd, you'd say your 33rd uh, bit uh, moving on there and that's that would actually be scanned there as a, a logic one. Um, so technically it is 32, but the way that you have to implement it within the FPGA is you uh, track it as 33, which is technically the stop bit, uh, which remains high. And so I got that all scanned with the logic analyzer uh, just to confirm everything. And I'm about to try another uh, FPGA uh, load of the firmware to see if I can get this stabilized. Okay, so I'll just run this FPGA load here. This is over the uh, USB blaster. So we've programmed the FPGA and I've got my code running, essentially some RAM uh, mapped here that I've defined, uh, which is actually getting sent and loaded into the RAM on the, uh, on the N64. And these hex variables uh, are essentially are mapped, are the variables that are used uh, within an ASCII table. So certain uh, hexadecimal numbers represent 
uh, a certain character uh, for the LCD display and that's part of the um, LCD display driver and so um, anyhow I, so essentially what I've done is I've mapped in some some messages in here uh, in hex and I've got them being sent uh, over the um, N64 Joybus port 4 into the FPGA and here we go here's the messages <laughs> So there we have it folks, so I've got the FPGA, uh, essentially it's a custom N64 UART uh, pretty much and so that's um, interpreting the, uh, the N64 Joybus protocol uh, being sent out over port 4 which is how I've programmed it within my uh, ROM, my ROM code or game code I guess you could say technically uh, and then that sends out a specific 8 byte packet um, and uh, over the protocol uh, and then I have it mapped in here and converting it and then representing those those signals uh, into ASCII codes uh, so yeah so it's pretty awesome so I got it working and I could uh, develop some further uh, uh, debug tools I guess uh, that would be just kind of neat to do as a fun project because I could potentially look at also um, you know rigging up uh, signals or having custom made uh, uh, adapters that we could use that insert into the back of the uh, joy the joystick, the uh, N64 joystick. So instead of a memory pack, we could throw in some a special connector that has um, some cables that hook up to another piece of equipment or just different, we could have a USB interface, I don't know. But uh, so that's kind of exciting uh, that it's opening doors. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that and uh, let you guys know that uh, I got it up and running. So it's pretty cool. Uh -huh.